And now I'm very, very happy to introduce Daniel Silbert and Carissa Whiting, who are going to be talking to us about their awesome GT summary package. Take it away, guys. Oh, you never never mind. This is going to be a pre-recorded talk. So you're going to be in the background listening to your questions, and I'm going to be playing the talk. Hello, everyone. My name is Daniel Silbert, and I'm here with my friend and colleague, Carissa Whiting. And we're going to be talking about the GT summary package and how it can help you improve your reproducibility um, of your reports. To begin, I just want to talk a little bit about the reproducibility problem in medical research. It's been reported on quite a bit over the last few decades, and there have been some incredible tools that have been introduced to improve the reproducibility of our work. For me, one of the big game-changing uh, developments has been the R Markdown document. Being able to integrate my code along with the report text has been incredibly valuable. There's always been this gap that I uh, have never been able to bridge, and that is after I create my markdown reports, many of the tables that I've made, I still need to do a bunch of tweaking by hand. And what we wanted to do is make it possible to have a 100% reproducible workflow using our markdown that required absolutely no tweaking, which led us to create this package, GT Summary. The goal of GT Summary was to, one, make the syntax incredibly simple, two, to make the output look exactly like it's ready for publication, no tweaking necessary, and three, to make it very easy to customize your output. There are several types of summary tables that are available within GT Summary. The first we're going to talk about are table one types. Now, in medical research, and when you read look at the journals, the most frequent table one is a description of your cohort. So I wanted to summarize regression models, create cross tabulations, and summarize survival data. Some important things that we wanted to do were to make these resulting tables very easy to work with. It's not infrequent that I need two regression models side by side, so it's easy to merge any two GT summary tables. One other gap that has been bridged by the GT summary package is that once you've created your beautiful tables, when you're writing your report, if you're talking about the odds ratios that you have estimated in your model that you've now beautifully summarized with GT summary, you need you need to be able to easily grab those odds ratios with the confidence interval and the p-value and slip them straight into your report. And with the inline text function, that is possible. Now, talking about the flexibility, we also introduce themes. Now, themes are something a, a command you can run once at the top of your script, and it will change the defaults for all of your GT summary tables. You can set a theme that says, oh, I'm going to be publishing this in JAMA. Let me use the JAMA theme. And now all of your results will follow the JAMA reporting guidelines. TBL summary is our primary function that summarizes data sets. So this is the data set we're going to be using our, as our example. It's called trial, but I'm making a small version of it. So that's SM trial. It only has four columns. And each of these columns has been labeled using the label package. So let's just get started with the most basic TBL summary. We are taking our data set, SM trial, and we're passing it to the TBL summary function, and we're using the argument by TRT. So what that's going to do is that's going to create a table one for you that's separated by treatment, TRT. What it does is it takes every column in your data set, and it adds it to this summary table. And you can see here there are three types of variables here. We have a continuous variable, that's age, categorical, that's great, and dichotomous, that's tumor response. So when you pass a data frame to TBL summary, it's going to do a lot of inspection of your data to find out what the best defaults should be. It's looking at that column age saying, okay, well, there's a lot of levels, there's a lot of spread here, that's definitely a continuous variable. And it's going to default to presenting the median and the IQR for you. It's going to next look at grades, say, okay, three unique levels um, in its character, definitely that is a categorical variable. Let me present that that way. And then lastly, dichotomous variables. Um, so what it's going to do, it's going to look for variables that are coded as 0, 1, true, false, yes and no, and it's going to automatically assume that that's a dichotomous line, and we're only going to present the yes or true or one per row. So in this case, tumor response is coded as zero one, and you're seeing the proportion of tumors that responded on a single line. You'll also see here that for age, we are 
showing the results to the nearest integer. When TVL summary sees a continuous variable, it also inspects the spread of the data to say, oh, I think that this should be um, rounded to the nearest integer or to the nearest decimal place or two decimal places. And it makes that, assu that uh, assertion based off of the spread of your data. So let's, in this example, change it up a bit. So rather than recording the median in IQR for age, I'm going to record the mean and the standard deviation in parentheses. So what I'm doing here is I'm using the statistic argument and I'm selecting all continuous variables and I'm telling it that I want the mean and the standard deviation. So this string that I'm passing up right here, there has mean in curly brackets, then it has a set of parentheses, and then in curly brackets, again, the standard deviation. Anything in the curly brackets is going to be evaluated just like it would be in a glue syntax type where it's taking what's in the curly brackets and it's, it's going to evaluate it. Now, in this case, it's doing two things. It's looking for the mean function and saying, oh, well, I'm going to take that vector of age or that vector of continuous variable, and I'm going to execute the mean function on it. And then also the SD function uh, later. And I'm going to put the results in the format indicated in the string. So this is a very concise way to report these things. So here's a quick schematic that shows what parts of those tables each of those arguments are modifying. So here in orange, the statistic argument changed the age from median IQR to mean and standard deviation. The digits argument changed from the default zero decimal places for age uh, to two decimal places. Uh, below that in green, the statistic argument added the denominator for grade. The label argument can change the variable labels, and the missing text can change the text that's shown for missing variables. Throughout the GT summary package, the, we use a special formula notation for selecting variables and telling it what we want uh, those variables, how those variables behave in our resulting tables. So here's a quick example of how you can select your variables. You can use the bare name age. You can put the names in a vector C. You can use tidy select starts with, and there are a couple of internal functions within GT summary called all continuous, all categorical, and all dichotomous sequence as well. So let's just start at the top. This is the simplest one. You can just say age on the left hand side of that formula tilde, and on the right side and hand side, you say, okay, for the column age, I want the label to be patient age. Moving on to type. You can select multiple columns by putting them in a vector. Age and marker, I want those to be displayed as continuous variables, which is the default in this case, but just for illustration, we have it here. For the digits, I'm saying anything that starts with age. Now, that's any tidy select function can be used here, which is fantastic. Uh, in this case, there's only one variable that starts with age, and it is the variable age, and I'm saying here to display it to the nearest integer or to zero digits. And for the statistic, I can change the statistic presented for all continuous variables at the same time with a single line saying all continuous tilde on, on, on the right side, mean and standard deviation. Now for the statistic argument, it's finding that function mean like I mentioned earlier, but I want to also say that any, any function can be used from any package as well. So it's quite flexible and really can report summaries for anything that you may need. Now, if you needed to pass two or more sets of instructions, you're just going to pop each of those uh, formulas into a list. So in addition to the arguments of TVL summary, there are a bunch of helper functions that you can use as well. Now, how you use these is you take the resulting TVL summary um, object and you just pipe it right into one of these functions. So there's this add family. Now, add adds an additional column of statistics or information to your table. So the most common one I use is called add p, and that adds p values to your table to compare to treat two or more treatment groups. Now let's review an example using the add p and a few of these other functions. Here's a schematic showing how some of those functions can be used. This does not include all of them. But you can see here in blue at the top, we've used the modified spanning header function to add a header over the treatment A and B. And we just say treatment received, drug A, drug B. It's quite informative. Um, add P over here on green on the right has been used to add a P value column. At the bottom in pink, modify footnotes has been used to update the standard footnote that is shown. Uh, in orange, just above that, we've added an additional column of overall statistics. 
to the left of that in yellow, add n is then used to add the number of non-missing observations for each one of those variables. Just to the left of that, bold labels in purple, you no know, bolding the labels for age and grade. And just above that, modify header in turquoise has changed the default header of two variable from the default characteristic. And there's a code example of this at the end of the slides if you're interested in taking a look. I'd like to give the time now to Carissa, who's going to talk to us about summarizing models with the TBL regression function. Hello, I'm Carissa Whiting, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about table regression, which is a function of the GT summary package that makes it very easy to display nicely formatted regression model results with only a few lines of code. Show what table regression can do, I'm going to use this logistic regression model example using the trial data set that Dan introduced earlier in the talk. But before that, I just want to mention under the hood, table regression is using the broom package to do some initial tidying of the model outputs, and then it's allowing some powerful customizations on top of that. So if a model method already has a broom tidier available, which many of them do, it's most likely going to be compatible with the table regression function. So for example, LM or GLM stats package or Cox Beach from the survival package, uh, LMER from the LME4 package, these are all going to be compatible as well as many more. So in this example, we're going to use tumor response as our outcome, which is a binary outcome, and we're interested in um, using age and tumor stage as covariates of interest. So if we're building and presenting this model, we're probably interested in displaying what the odds ratio estimates are and their confidence intervals. Um, we're probably interested in showing the p-values for the covariates, and we want to make clear what the reference levels are for the categorical variables. So here on the right is just the very raw output of the model object. And then here's the basic table regression code and the very basic table output on the right. Here we're just going to be passing the model object to the table regression function. And we see already that the reference rows are created for the categorical variables, and it's very clear which one is the reference level. Variable labels are displayed, so similar as with the table summary function, uh, if your data set is labeled, those labels will be carried through and displayed in the table. Additionally, because we specified this exponentiate equals true argument, our coefficients are exponentiated, and the, the function is able to detect that these are odds ratios because it's a logistic model, so it's able to give that correct OR heading as well as this odds ratio footnote. So next, we might be interested in customizing these regression tables a little bit. And one nice thing about this package is that the framework is pretty unified. So a lot of those helper functions or arguments that Dan already talked about that were relevant to table summary are also relevant here to table regression. So for example, all of those bold functions, like bold labels, bold P, or italicized levels, all of these formatting functions can be used here as well. And also here, we're specifying that we want our p-value specified to two significant digits. So that's also available to both table summary and table regression, as well as some other model objects we'll talk about later. But one new one I'll introduce you to here is add global p. So by default, the function is going to calculate level-specific p-values for our categorical variables. But by passing our table to this add global p function, it's going to use the ANOVA function from the car package to go ahead and calculate a global p-value. And for full transparency, it'll print a note or a message in your console specifying that that's the function that it needs to calculate that. So here's a schematic just to kind of review what we discussed. So we use the bold labels and the italicized levels just to kind of format our table and make it look a little nicer. Um, we use the p-value function to specify we wanted two significant digits. We have the global p, we exponentiated to get those odds ratios. And then I use the bold p function to specify I wanted any p-value under the threshold of 0.1 to be bold. So by default it's 0.05, but here I've just changed it to be 0.1. So in addition to the table regression function, there's also table UV regression, which allows you to very easily run univariate regressions for a set of select variables. So here in this example, I'm taking the trial data set and I'm again selecting age, stage, and response. And then I'm passing those to the table UV function, um, specifying which of those is our outcome, which is Y equals response. Um, I'm specifying what method to use for the univariate regression, which is GLM. And then I'm going to need to specify any method args that I might need. So in this, for example, we need to specify that the family is binomial. And then again, I can use a lot of those same arguments helper functions, um, like exponentiate, any of the bold functions, that add what will be function. So those can also be used here as table regression. So as a bit of an aside from the regression functions, I just want to talk quickly about this really helpful um, function inline text. So this function can be used with any sort of GT summary object, like a table summary, a table regression, or a table UV regression object. And with this function, you can pluck out any element or statistic from your table and report it inline in your R marked report. 
So for example, here, if I want to report the odds ratio for age, um, I can just go ahead and specify this with this um, inline R chunk, And then when I knit it, it'll come out like this and it'll give me that really nicely formatted odds ratio. And this is really useful for making your reports extremely reproducible because you can guarantee if any tables are changing or if your underlying data changes, the text that your R markdown report will change as well. So I'm just very briefly going to talk about these two functions, table merge and table stack. And these are just functions that allow you to combine results from any of the other functions we uh, previously discussed. So for example, we built a regression table, a UV regression table. If I use this table merge function, I can go ahead and put them in one nice, concise, unified table to present the results all at once. Similarly, table stack just allows you to stack tables on top of each other, whether summary tables or regression tables, whatever they are, you can combine them in these ways. So we've shown how to customize individual elements of tables using things like function arguments or helper functions, but now I want to introduce you to themes, which are a way you can package a lot of these different customizations together into bundles, and then you can easily set and reset these across your reports or even across your projects. So a theme is basically a defined set of customization preferences, and again, you can easily set and reuse these. Themes control a lot of the default settings for existing functions. So for example, Dan talked about the statistic argument and table summary. If you always want to present for continuous variables a mean instead of a median, you can do that. Um, you can do that as the default and set that within your theme. Additionally, themes can control um, some more fine-grained customization options that may not be available via existing arguments or helper functions. So they, they really give you a lot of additional options in that way. And we already have a couple available package themes um, ready to use, but it's also very easy to create your own if you have a very specific set of preferences you prefer. So just to go over a couple of the currently available themes, um, we have a couple journal themes, and these are great because they already have a lot of settings um, built in to give you the exact specific formatting you need to submit to um, journals. So right now we have a JAMA theme and a, and a Lancet theme available, um, and these do things like round your p-values to the correct number of different digits, and also format your statistics. So for example, I know JAMA requires you have a dash between your interquartile range statistics, so this theme will go ahead and do that for you. Additionally, we have several language themes available. So I think we have about 12 languages currently supported, and these will change um, the statistics and the footnotes to be um, to the language of your choice. So for both this and the journal theme, we're definitely looking to expand these to add more journals and more languages in. So if you're interested in helping out with that, please let us know. We'd love to collaborate to make our library of themes even bigger. And then we have um, some formatting themes. So the theme compact just reduces the padding and font size of your tables. And I use this one a lot just because it makes your reports look really neat and really tight. So this is just a useful, aesthetically pleasing formatting theme. And as I mentioned before, it's really easy to create your own. Um, a theme is essentially just a named list of different theme elements. And there's a glossary of available theme elements of the documentation. So here I just made a kind of crazy theme where I made my labels rainbow, I put hearts next to P values, I subbed my percentage signs and statistics to be smiley faces. So this is just to show there's a lot of things you can do with these themes and, and a lot of options. So now I'm going to pass it back to Dan, who's going to talk a little bit more in depth about how GT summary tables work with our markdowns and some of our available print engines. We'd like to finish by talking a little bit about our markdown output formats and print engines that are available within GT Summary. Now, obviously, the packages called GT Summary were optimized to use the GT package as your primary printer. Um, with HTML output, GT is a fantastic engine to select. But while PDF and RTF are under construction, you may find yourself needing something else. For example, I often use a flex table when I need word output. To use any of these print engines, you simply take any GT summary object and you pipe it straight into as GT or as Flextable, for example. And what will happen is that a series of formatting functions within each of those packages will be applied to your GT summary object. The result is that you will no longer have a GT summary object. You will have, in the end, a GT object that has been formatted or a flex table object that has been formatted. This allows you to have a lot of flexibility in the types of uh, outputs that you use with your markdown. If you already know a family of formatting functions that, and know it well, it's easy to just stick with that and what you already know. 
lastly, just thank you all for taking the time to, to listen to us uh, talk about our package, GT Summary, and thank you to all the authors and the contributors and the many people at Sloan Kettering who have tested the package over the last year. Um, it's been a pleasure to be here with you all. Thank you. Great. Thank you all very much for the presentation. That was that was fantastic. And there's, I see there's uh, quite a few quite a few questions. Um, the the first one that has the most responses. It's not a question. Just uh, want to say thank you for this awesome package. Um, the next runner up is how difficult is it to change the format of the output presentation? For example, I mean, put mean, median, and IQR on a different row for, for a continuous variable. Um, so to put them on separate actual rows in the table at the moment, it's actually in, in an open pull request. Uh, there are a little bit of a workaround if you're using the flex table output, you can use that escape N to do a line break within a cell to get it on separate rows as well. Okay, great. I think I can uh, sneak in another question. In terms of adding statistics with GT summary, is it possible to do post hoc analysis? Um, so there is a very general function called add stat that you can add literally any statistic that you want to uh, a TBL summary object. So in that sense, yes, you can add almost anything you want. And we try to create functions to do the most common stuff. Okay, great. Um, looks like we're out of time and should probably move to the next session. Thank you guys very much for your, your talk. I think that was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Timing here.